Hi, everybody. this is Gijs again, and yes, traveling to Sweden, we came to a fantastic spot again, and I took my chances. Because we parked the Toyota, my ladies, they are reading and painting and drawing, and I just had the chance to explore that place. Now, let me explain a little bit on where we are at the moment. Um, we are about 50 kilometers to the east of Uppsala and about 100 kilometers, I think, to the north of Stockholm. And this is a place which is called Bennebosbroek. And Broek, I think, uh, translates literally into a manufacturing place industry. And Benefold's book, and this is basically the old sign metal with a Maya on top of it, if this is the correct English word. But they made a new one, which is printed on plastic, but a little bit better to see what is going on. Of course, this is a very nice old painting. This is a nice drawing of how it was, but this is the map. And what you will see is that here and here, there are two furnaces. And this is a place that was used to melt um, raw iron or what to take from the ground and to make, to melt it and to make iron out of it. And the beauty is that a couple of days ago, and now we have to look at this other map, um, this is where we are at the moment. This is where we are at the moment. This is where we are at the moment. Why can't I find it now? Bennable. This is the place. And a couple of days ago, we were at Danamora. And Danamora is the biggest iron mine in the whole region. Uh, they had a furnace there as well, or a brook. Uh, but it was not big enough, so they transported on the winter circum in the winter on ice and snow um, the raw iron metal that they take from the ground to Bennable. Now, and now I had a small, a quick look around already. So now let's do a sort of episode of abandoned buildings and also of epic explorations because this is one of the nicest things that I have seen. So just follow me. And of course I have taken the drone so I can do some nice imaging as well. When I'm exploring this brook. And this is the easiest part. Just going into this first uh, furnace. Now what you see here is the first oven or furnace that was used to melt the iron ore, if that's the correct word. And I always love these industrial operations. And you see, there are a lot of holes in there just to get the air into the furnace itself. And there is a hole here. Let's have a look. Now, it's good that I'm small. Wow. And now I'm in the middle of this furnace. Oh, you can see in the top, but it's difficult to show you this. There is basically the part where they get the iron ore in from above. And when everything's melted, and then you can see that this is why they take it out. And I'm not a specialist in this, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just what I learned. But this is a small one. Now let's hop over to the white one, which is even bigger and there's more to show you. This 
this is the second furnace and the staircase that I'm looking at um, it's a pretty sketchy one but who cares you know the first part it's really because it's in the wind and the rain the whole time it is very very worn out but the second one which is basically sort of in the building that one is quite all right and now we get a lot of pigeon poo now this is the top of basically uh, this furnace and now let me walk you a little bit around because this is what i could not show you on the other one and if you see a nice hump here it's not my extra nipple it's just a microphone that i hit underneath this one because it is quite windy outside now let me show you this is what it looks like this is the top of the furnace and this is a very big shovel that you fill basically the whole furnace with and if you look inside you will see that it is very very deep and what i do like is that the shovel is really nice and balanced That was the furnace, uh, but this furnace needs to be basically fed, of course, with a fuel, and that is coal. And this is the big door that was used to load the coal from the, to the top of the tower and to get it to get it into the furnace itself to melt the iron. Um, now let's go back down because. On the bottom of this it's just a bigger version of the small one that you just saw but it is still quite interesting also because there is a water mill um, connected to this whole brook and on the outside because the surroundings are very nice as well and there's also something that i would like to show you so now let's dive underneath that big bar and let's go down and again, no, it's a better way to do this the other way around because it is still pretty sketchy. And now I need one hand for the camera. Oh, this is so nice. Whoa. And because it is so steep, there's a lot of bricks around it and oh, when I look at myself this looks like a very spooky, spooky image but still let's go down and this is actually pretty hard to shoot if you're all doing this by yourself now one more to go and up again to get the drone oh. Hello countrymen, I would like to make an announcement. I'm going to get the drone. Now from the stairs there is this little gallery. And when we go in, you will see that this is basically where the air is being drawn into the furnace itself. This is where the melting has been done. And I think they put really nice um, metal tubes in here so that they can blow more air into this. Now let, follow me to the other side because there's more interesting to be seen. Let's climb a few rocks. Because basically this is where I'm walking on top of a little bridge here. And this is of course where the water power was used to drive a turbine. It's got a very big wheel, let me show you how this might work. 
you see this is the big cast iron wheel and of course there was a belt going to the other side where they can drive other machines and one of the machines that I particularly like is this one you can see that again one of those big wheels where the belt is going on to the smaller one is like a couple of gears um, and here a third one again and the funny thing is I tried it because when I stand on it with my little bit of 63 kilograms I can still move it and when this was working and the belt would have been here then this grinding stone would have worked like so and I'm not sure if you can read the date but there is a date of let me turn it a little bit in the other direction oh, it's heavy there is the date of 1890 and this is where the name of the previous Broek was, or maybe the manufacturing Broek. I can read Broek here, but I can't read what it says here. Something like Harels or something, or Hax, Hex, Hax. So, this is what I like about you know all buildings, and they're everywhere in Sweden. Sweden was a big manufacturer of steel products or raw materials to make steel products with um, or from. You've got these scattered all over the country where they have iron ore. And now I've got the correct name. Whew, that took me quite some time. Now, let's hop over to the totally other side and I'll show you something interesting there as well. And the thing is that if we walk around this, we cross the bridge again. And here, you will see that it is really a big furnace. And again here we've got one of those places where the um, air went into on the other side you can see basically that blowing pipe as well now and then when the iron was melted whoo son this is where they could take it out from that big hole, this is where the melted iron came out. One other little thingy is that on this side, there is a little, where is it? There is a little well. I opened it, there's water in there. It's not deep. Now, let's continue the journey. Because if we go up the stairs here, we get to the upper, part basically of the Broek, the Pinnables Broek and actually here there is very old piece of looks like stone but this is actually iron that probably came out of the furnace you see the big house that's where the door is where the coal went into and there must have been something like a ramp here. And on the other side, I did see uh, not only a ramp, but there is underneath those two holes, those arches, uh, there is a sort of cart system that goes up into the upper tower. So maybe that's how they did it as well. Now, the funny thing is that when we went here for the very first time earlier this morning, this is the part that puzzled us. All these pillars, what are they? Well, it's quite easy to explain. Just follow me through the forest. And these pillars, they're quite big. Now, if you follow me to this direction and make a shortcut here, then you will see that on the background there is this ramp 
So, what did they do on the road, which is on that side, they've taken carts or trolleys or whatever, went up the ramp, and here, there would have been a platform or maybe rails, and that's where they dumped basically the coal that was needed to light the furnaces and to get the iron ore melted into metal. Absolutely brilliant. A super age that must have been. But we all know that it gave also a lot of miseries because it was not funny to work in a mine, not in the iron ore mine, not in a coal mine. And of course, circumstances were totally different than nowadays. And now, let's head back to the family. Now, I'm not really sure if this is going to work. I need to jump, but at least I've got some great drone shots. Yes, that one worked. But then, hmm, that's a big, very big gap. Let's not go that way. Now, I hope you liked this little video about Bedebold's Broek in Sweden. And well, I've seen a lot of heritage and I've learned something today as well. So if you like this video, then please give it a like and also hit the subscribe button if you really, really like it. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. And now there's a dog barking at me. Happens a lot of time. Thank you so much. Bye bye.